Hello and welcome back to Sunny Talk Spurs and today I'm going to be asking the question are Tottenham getting lucky? Is Angeball too risky? And did we get away with one against Everton yesterday? Should we have maybe lost? But before we answer all those different topics, if you are new to the channel, why don't you leave a like on the video, subscribe to Sunny Talk Spurs, hit that notification bell because it'll let you know when I'm going live over the Christmas holidays. And yes, I'm home for Christmas, I'm wearing a Duffman jumper, I'm not in my usual setting, I'm literally having to balance the camera and use my lapel mic for this one, but wanted to react to the game, you know, watch all the highlights, see all the results, you know, make my own judgment and then come with a video the next day, because that's what I like to do on this channel. And to start, my first talking point, Tottenham in the top four for Christmas Day, you know, what a present so far, no one thought we were going to do it, you know, looking at the table now on my laptop screen we are fourth with 36 points villa 39 points liverpool 39 points as well and arsenal 40 points city on fifth obviously with a game in hand on 34 points as well and you know what's quite interesting after as well arsenal and liverpool drew villa as well only getting a draw us with a nice win you know good weekend for us actually in general and city as well but not one person saying a Tottenham in the title race. They're just saying everyone else is. You know, Villa are, but we're not. Okay. But good to see our form change around after, you know, a tricky period where we could win a game. Now we've won our last three. So especially when the fixtures come thick and fast over Christmas, you know, you want to pick up points at this stage. And, you know, if you told any Tottenham fan you'd be in the top four at Christmas, I think they would have bit your hand off, you know, even after that tricky run of fixtures against Chelsea, Wolves, West Ham... Villa, respectively. So I think we've all got to be quite happy with that. And if we can stay there towards the end of the season, happy days. You know, Ange is working wonders at this club. I am very, very happy. But now moving on to the game. And to start off, I thought we started very, very well. You know, usually in games like this, you know, our last few games and the ones that we lost as well, the first 20 to 30 minutes, fantastic, flying out the blocks. But then it sort of changed, didn't it? And we were clinging on for life for 70 minutes and Everton really got a foothold in the game and you weren't sure who was the home team and who was the away team. But more about the individual talking points. Richarlison scores against his old club. Thought he really, really did well for the goal. Got, you know, right in front of that near post to tap it home. And, you know, I've been saying a lot um, about strikers at Tottenham. You know, this is now his fifth or sixth goal of the season. He's doing really well, like... I'm backing him to score now most games. But imagine, and I'm still imagining if we had someone else up there. I'm thinking Dom Solanke. I watched Dominic Solanke uh, against um, whoever Bournemouth played. I can't remember. Uh, Nottingham Forest. And he was sublime. The headers out of nothing are incredible. And the poacher's instinct, his hold-up play, his quickness, speed, all of it, perfect for Tottenham. I've said it on the video so far, so go back and watch that if you haven't already. I just think he would be the perfect mould for us and at a very reasonable price, although it might be going up a little bit now. And then also, Brennan Johnson, I thought was really good for the goal as well. Worked it really well down that right-hand side. I think he's just going to be a perfect player for us. Really, really am happy with Brennan Johnson um, so far at Tottenham Hotspur. And then the second goal comes from a corner. I think we've been quite good from um, set pieces this year. Um, I mean, we were known as a bit of a set piece side um under Conte but it seems that now we know how to work them and play them short this one again we played it short so very happy with um you know our way we're working corners now I think it's very very good and obviously on the end of this corner Sun scores it he's 11th goal of the season um now equaling last I oh know beating last season's total I think I've got up on the screen right now um 10 goals last year 11 this year so he's got you know I think again playing on that right hand side I think Sun is a better player and getting a striker through the middle whether it's Richardson or someone else is also better as well but now for the main talking points and the way I've listed these on my notes are very very incredible I've said were we lucky now let me know in the comments down below do you think Tottenham were lucky yesterday should we have lost should we have got a draw I personally think We've been on the wrong end of some bad luck. I'm thinking the West Ham game, don't think they deserved it. Villa, don't think they really deserved it. So I think it's about time that it came, you know, swings and roundabouts and stuff like that. So, you know, 
there was various lucky moments during the game. I mean, the two balls being on the pitch where Mikulenko hit, it was like something out of Looney Tunes, my mate said. Could not absolutely believe that. But I don't know how it happened. I thought it was going to be like a Darren Bent beach ball situation when it was sort of unfolding. So I was very confused about that. The foul on Emerson, which led to a goal being disallowed. I think it's a foul. You can't, I mean, don't get me wrong, I think Emerson had a good game, but on that moment, Vicario passes out and he divvies on it a little bit. But I, I can't remember who it was, it might have been Andre Gomez, literally goes through the back of him and takes out his like knee slash leg. So I think that's a foul. That's a foul to me. I don't think anything else. Uh, Dyer coming on at half-time for Romero. I mean, that's unlucky, isn't it? You know, I, Everyone knows my thoughts on the channel about Romero. Uh, they hit the post through Jack Harrison. Um, and then the last minute, post off the line, Vicario didn't know anything about it. Yeah, that's that's a bit of luck as well. So, you know, I think you just you make your own luck, didn't you? I think, you know, it is sort of part of the Ange Paul system. And that's what I'm going to get to uh, as, in one of my later points as well. I just think, you know, that happens in every game. We've hit the post in games. You know, Kulosevsky the other week against Villa, like... We have dominated games and not got results. We did sort of let Everton back in it. That's a separate point. But I do think, you know, in football, you make your own luck sometimes. And everyone says about VAR and that. And, you know, all those sort of decisions were, at, you know, not VAR related. But I do think the foul was a foul and the goal should have been chalked off. So I think that was the correct decision. Vicario, though. What a goalkeeper we have on our hands. I keep mentioning, I did a video this week about Vicario, so I'm glad he had a game of his life. Go back and watch that if you haven't already, either as a Christmas treat. Just incredible, isn't he? Unbelievable for the price, just such a good shot stopper. Parries it really well as well. There was a shot in the first half where he parries it, and it's really weird with his hand movement, and it just goes all the way out for a like, corner on the other side. Very, very good stuff. Um, just absolutely a fantastic, fantastic Keeper. And then I put a bit of a gripe here. I watched Match of the Day last night. You know, I'm back home for Christmas, so I want to watch Match of the Day with my dad. The Everton love him. Oh, my God. You would have thought we'd lost. They did an analysis of how Everton played and spoke about the foul for a couple of seconds. And that was it. There was nothing else about, like, you know, any any of the other style of, like, our play or how we took the lead or anything like that. It just wasn't wasn't good enough. And then another talking point, which is where the title comes from, is Ange Ball too risky, is to do with a bit of the luck we got and also style at the end, you know, kept going, kept going, you know, playing this sort of, you know, risk and reward football, as I like to call it, but also, you know, a bit gung-ho, people call it as well, a bit like how Leeds would play. But I'm still backing it. I think, you know, the best form of defence is attack. I'd rather do that. You know, we've still got this resilience in this team. I think we've got more resilience than we did under Conte. And we used to sit back in those games and just concede anyway. So what's the point of doing it? I really don't understand. I think we've just got to keep going. We've still got a lot of issues in the squad that will be resolved hopefully come the new year. You know, we're missing Basuma and Adogi in that game. And I really think it showed. We're not going to get Basuma back for a while. And Adogi will be back next game. And I think, you know, the Romero sub at half-time. Hopefully his injury isn't too bad. Um, hopefully it's just a knock and a precaution because I, I can't deal with Eric Dyer. It would have to be Emerson at centre-back because Emerson was already on anyway. But, yeah. So that's my, those are my thoughts on the game. Just quite a whirlwind. Um, and I don't think Angeball... I think it is risky from the title. I think it is risky. But I think it's worth the reward. I keep keep saying that, you know. Did we get lucky? Yes. But in we make our own luck. We were good at making our own luck. And should we park the bus at the end? No, I don't think we should. I think we should keep going and see what happens. You know, I, st I still think people say Everton deserve something out of it. Nah, I think, you know, they're not as potent as they could be against us. But yeah, those are my thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts were in the comments down below of all the things I've discussed. And wish you all a merry, merry Christmas. Hope you have a good day wherever you are around the world. And if you are new to the channel, leave a like on the video. Subscribe to Sunny Talks Birds. Hit that notification bell because it let you know when I'm going live. And I'll see you again pretty, pretty soon. And a ciao.